<laughs> My name is Omar Dejani. I teach public international law and contracts to first years and also international negotiations, uh, transnational lawyering and sometimes some uh, other international courses. I uh, have been here at McGeorge since 2004. It's very founding. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jared Wong. Uh, I'm a co-director of the Global Center as is Omar Dejani. I come from Singapore originally uh, and I've been here forever in a day as well. Uh, I teach international, commercial, and investor state arbitration. I also teach international economic law, teach contracts uh, to the first years uh, like Omar does. Um, and um, I think that uh, sums it up in terms of kind of where we're coming from and what we do. Uh, so we're here to tell you a little bit about the Global Center, which is the nexus of all things international at McGeorge. Uh, and I know we'll forget this, so we'll tell you this right now, which is that there is a website uh, or a, a host page just for the Global Center at McGeorge Law School. So if you just type in Global Center um, McGeorge, uh, you will find the Global Center's webpage. And there is a newsletter there which tells you all the current activities of the Global Center and then more general information about uh, the faculty that reside at law, uh, at McGeorge who teach uh, international law subjects and it's a huge uh, range, right? We're very proud of the, the breadth and depth of commitment of the faculty to international law and that's really what allows us to provide the kind of sterling international program that we think we have here at McGeorge. It's really true, you know, um, it's a rare thing on an American law school campus uh, to have more than half of the faculty write regularly in the area of international and comparative law to bring to their scholarship and to the classroom the uh, a sense of how law operates transnationally. And what's also exciting is that many of the professors here have had uh, really extraordinary um, uh, practice experiences uh, prior to joining the faculty and for some since uh, joining the faculty. Just to take one example, uh, our colleague Steve McCaffrey, whose office is right down the hall, was, uh, after joining the faculty of McGeorge some quite a few years ago, uh, became a member of the International Law Commission, uh, which plays a central role in uh, helping to advance the progressive development of international law at the United Nations. And uh, he is probably, without any exaggeration, the premier practitioner and scholar of international water law in the world. Uh, so it's wonderful to have the chance to work with faculty colleagues with the diversity of expertise uh, that this uh, law school uh, offers um, and uh, also with the unity of interest in international and, and transnational matters. And so that obviously not only allows us to uh, offer a diverse range uh, of classes, um, including classes, by the way, that take place not just during the regular semester, but between the semesters during the intercession. So, for example, Global Center has an international board of advisors that provides guidance on uh, the curriculum, on uh, helping our students uh, establish careers and further their interests uh, in international law. Uh, and they've also served as adjunct faculty members, including during um, the most recent intercession in January when Kate Barragona at the World Bank um, offered a class in... Uh, global Infrastructure yeah, Development, that's I right. believe. And uh, we also had one of our other board members who is a partner at uh, a law firm in Paris, Brian Cave, uh, Joe Smallhoover, teach a course on uh, foreign corrupt practices. And one of the things that we're really trying to institutionalize at McGeorge is um, short courses in between sessions where practitioners with extraordinary experience who are coming right from the field can uh, spend an intense week with students offering the benefit not only of their expertise, uh, but also of their immediate experience. Um, and we found that that's also one of the useful ways in which McGeorge uh, undertakes to build for students 
a bridge to practice. One of the things we're aiming to do in the coming year is to greatly expand our international externship and internship program. And so um, already we've had students uh, undertake a pretty impressive array of international internships in places ranging from The Hague, where we currently have uh, uh, one student and one fairly recent graduate uh, working together at the uh, International Criminal Court. Um, and uh, we have um, uh, we've placed students in contexts ranging from the Middle East uh, to uh, law firms, law firms in Germany and, and the Netherlands and France. So it's yeah, been an incredible adventure for all of us here. And obviously we've, wanted, we've folded uh, that experiential perspective uh, into our classes as well. We have a slate of classes uh, that are capstone experiential courses that are part of our international concentration uh, that's available to students. Um, here and they include international business agreements, uh, international arbitration, uh, the new international negotiations class that uh, Omar is teaching, uh, and these classes uh, set out to bring that real world perspective into the classroom so as to enable students to get a feel of what uh, the practice of that particular discipline might look like. Um, we've also organized a series of symposia uh, on campus which have included uh, the Guatemala Workspace Project that Raquel Aldana uh, was in charge of, the International Investment Program that I put together, uh, the Global Center Annual Symposium which was on international criminal law, um, which we organized recently uh, in March, uh, which are obviously open to the students um, as well. So there is always something going on uh, on campus that uh, we very much welcome your participation in, uh, and which I think will give you a really good flavor of kind of what goes on here. And I should add that the symposia that the Global Center puts on very often are addressing issues that are right at uh, the cutting edge that are on the front pages. To take just one example, the symposium that Jared hosted uh, this spring uh, was on investor state uh, dispute resolution within the context of uh, international uh, trade and investment treaties. Sounds a little bit dry, but when we remember the fact that right now one of the issues that is uh, looming large over the American presidential campaign is the United States participation in two big trade treaty regimes, uh, TPP and TTIP, which was the very focus of this symposium. You can get a sense of uh, both the relevance of the work that's being discussed and the usefulness of uh, gaining access to the conversation. And let's not forget the really exciting series of Skype interviews that you had set up for the International Negotiations uh, Club. Th yeah, do you want right. to tell um, our viewers a little bit about uh, what was going on there? Well, so one, one of the things that was really fun this year uh, was uh, in the, as a complement to the International Negotiations course that I was teaching, uh, we pulled together a series of uh, lunchtime conversations via Skype with international negotiators uh, who were literally uh, talking to us from, uh, from uh, on-site. We had uh, the senior political officer for the United Nations mission to Syria who uh, gave us a report on uh, how things were unfolding with respect to the peace talks. Uh, we had someone, conversely, um, who had just returned from uh, providing negotiation advice to Syrian opposition movements uh, in the field. Uh, we spoke to someone who uh, had been uh, providing, uh, uh, who had worked as a negotiator in, the, uh, uh, in a range of conflicts in Africa. The speaker series gave a wonderful opportunity not only to hear from people who were there in the trenches in the field, but also for students to converse with them. It was one of the really fun things we've got to do this year. And we've talked a little bit about how uh, students have um, 
been placed in international internships around the world, but we also have international students here who have been placed in domestic law firms. And I, I think that transnational experience has been incredibly invaluable uh, to these students, uh, including, for example, Sylvia, who is from Guatemala, who has been doing a three-unit internship uh, at a local law firm here in Sacramento, uh, has found the you know experience incredibly uh, uh, valuable as a window into transnational practice here in the U.S. Um, and so those opportunities are available uh, to students um, as well. And one of the things we also really try to facilitate at McGeorge, and one thing that differentiates it from many other institutions where foreign students study, is we place a premium on giving our LLM students as many opportunities as possible to connect with and build enduring relationships with our JD students. And we have found that those relationships built in class, built in activities that uh, we organize, uh, whether it's the Global Center or the many student organizations on campus uh, or in the clinics, we find that those relationships end up being incredibly useful both for the LLM students and for the JD students. Indeed, one of our uh, JD students uh, was delighted to find that he was able to get a job in Italy thanks to the intervention of uh, one of our excellent uh, LLM students last year.